time to give some thoughts on what exactly has shifted with the YCS. Don't be like the 33.8% of you guys have not smashed the living crap out script and smash it so we can get to 102,000. So we're going to do top deck profiles or top decks later on in the week here for the format. But I want to give some thoughts post YCS here, kind of unpack some of the things that we've seen or some of the shocks that I think kind of came with this format. Now, that being said, okay, so the YCS has come and gone. Are we surprised to see that Phantom Knight might not have performed up to standards? Uh, I'm a little bit intrigued by Phantom Knight's um, not huge placement in the format. Now, I, a lot of players were definitely very over-prepared for this, all right? Like, let's not, let's not take this away, you know, a lot of players were very scared for this, and a lot of players made a lot of meta calls based on that, which definitely pressured Phantom Knights a lot harder, all right, and I think it's a very important thing to understand is, you know, when you have something like this where players pressure a deck with this and make metagame choices like this, now we could see a recurgence here of Phantom Knights a little bit later on. I mean, it's not to say that we're not seeing local turnouts here that are seeing massive Phantom Knights. I've heard countless reports from a lot of players going, yeah, my local is just three rounds of Phantom Knights and like one Eldritch. That is a thing that does happen right now in this game. But with that being said, on the higher end of the competitive spectrum here, a lot of players are very prepared for this matchup, thus forcing the deck into submission at this point in time. And I don't think that that's a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. But as we go forward here, will Phantom Knights remain as one of the top decks via the format? Absolutely they will. They're going to remain one of those decks that you're going to need to be prepared for. And I'm not saying this to continue on the trend of, you know, oh my god, Robbie, you're just trying to reinforce the fact that the Phantom Knights are, you're trying to say they're the best deck in the room. No, I'm saying that they're one of the better decks in the room. There's a little bit of a big distinction between the lack of those two. So, yes, the brave combo that gives this deck its oomph. Remember, this deck still has issues with itself when your greatest enemy is yourself. I mean, unfortunately, bricking is just part of the possibility at the end of the day. Also, Cherubini dropping Aquamancer is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in this game. But hey, you know what? The rank 3 toolbox deck deserves all the real chicken tendies that it could ever actually deserve. So yeah, that's my little thoughts on PK out of the event here. Now, that being said, what is going on with these pile decks? Now, I am going to go a lot more in depth on the discussion of these sub engines. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you bring enough good stuff cards back into the game, you're going to see decks that are going to generically gravitate around this. Uh, we called this back in the day cookie cutter chaos. Now, we haven't really seen something on this level. We were seeing like good stuff synchro toolbox decks from Japan that would pop up every blue moon here. You know, their versions are a lot more toxic because they have O-Lion and things like that. But when you look at our version of this deck here, it's basically we're going to take all of the best aspects. Magician Souls draw power. You know, we're going to take the Dagda Slash Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer package. You know, we're going to pull from the a whole brave package here that sets up an Omni to get. We're, we're just pulling from every sort of non-restricting thing at this point in time, and we're building this pile of cards, as we're going to call it, which is just all sub-engines, all right? Whatever does not restrict you into X thing is going to be what this deck is going to strive for. Now, because Brave is in the format here, all right, Brave is warping the format. And on the topic of that, you know, you have to touch on the pile cards because this is possible because of Adventurer being its thing. Now you're like, well, okay, so Adventurer is not that busted, right? A deck that sets up an Omni Negate, a Bounce, a free token that's level four, a free level seven special summon, a free banishment to recur back something, and a free spell or trap card on the field that you can pop off and feed off for any sort of resource that you could ever actually want. Well, holy crap, ladies and gentlemen. That's absolutely insanity in terms of raw power granted to one card starters, by the way. All right, one card turns on this entire combo. That's why players were looking at Ghost Ogre very early on in the format here to pop that Faithful Adventure so you didn't have to deal with all of that. But now that we've streamlined all of this together into one more massive thing, um, you're basically facing a different story at this point in time. So yes, 
This format is going to go down as the adventurer format because of the craziness that is gravitating around right now because of this. Now, I got to talk about Invoked here. Now, I'm hearing a lot of people and just this has been a passing thought because this was brought up on stream by one player, but I've already heard the thoughts from a few other players. It's what in the heck happened to normal summon Alistair and friends? You know, like Alistair was doing just fine on the last format. You know, they lost one whole Nadir servant. What in the world happened to shift from one event to another? Well, ladies and gentlemen, have you guys read anything Brave at related at all? Because 95% of the time, you make a Macaba uh, and you don't have a spell in your hand. I mean, you can have a spell in your hand, but it's you're, you're going to probably use your Meltdown or your Draw sources to get things. And then as soon as a Brave token is established on the field, they get access to Draco back, they get to set up an Omni Gate. Your Macaba isn't going to last. Because the power scaling in the format actually went up at this point in time, Macaba Pass is not enough. All right, what would have been enough in previous formats is just too weak at this point in time. And I, I really want to be like more, yeah, I I want to support the thought out here of Invoked doing something via the format. But unfortunately, it's just no longer a realistic expectation to pass on Macaba and expect that to be the strongest board that you can make. Now, obviously, Winda is a thing that you can produce. But once again, Winda also falls victim to the Brave package. All right, literally a well-timed bounce on a Draco back sends that entire deck down the absolute crapshoot. And unfortunately, you can't really do much about it, ladies and gentlemen. So I hate to say that, but from where we're standing right now, yeah, unfortunately, Invoked is just, it's its pushed so far down that it's ridiculous. Now, I wanna talk about Eldlich here. Now, Eldlich has undergone a very interesting evolution now. Now remember, there are two Eldlich variants that you can play. You can play the, yeah, 500 IQ, strap on your helmet, you can do anything that you wanna be, said the 32 back row Eldlich player, all right? You can, you can take over the world, I guess. Uh, weird thought, but okay. Skill Drain is the bane of that deck, all right? And then you have the Cyber's Eldlich pile. Now, for those of you that don't know, Cyber Eldritch has kind of the same goal as the Brave Synchro deck, where it wants to end on some of the most toxic interactions you can. But the Eldritch package is a, basically the backbone of the Cyber deck. You basically use Cyber Gadget Dot Scraper, you one card up into Dag to Scythe, and then all of your Eldritch cards are just your deck. They're your protection. They give you the interactions that you need to play the game. That's what makes that build so good. And I mean, consistent one card packages throughout the years have proven to us to consistently work. All right. I.e. Prank Kids, but we'll talk more about that when we get to the top five video. So Eldlich has undergone these major scaling changes in evolution where you're going to consistently see Eldlich be this massive dominator in this format. And it's it's going to continue to be one of those crazy decks that whether or not you're playing the heavy variant on traps or if you're just playing the Cybers Eldlich package to kind of protect you at the end of the day. But Eldlich as a whole right now is still here in the format. It's just not in the iterations that we kind of really thought we would see. You know, having a trap build that can protect your investment and do some relatively crazy things for you at the end of the day. I think is what really strengthens that deck, all right? As, as a standalone, the trap variant is a lot weaker, but that's what we're looking at at this point in time. So final thoughts on and this right now. The YCS showed us that there's a lot of things that need to be changed with this format. Brave sent this format down a crazy, crazy paradigm, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the craziest changes that we'll ever see to the modern era game. Now, with that being said, your next evolution will be coming up here in the next couple months once Fallen of Albaz enters into the fray, and you can bet your butt that as soon as that happens, players are not going to have a fun time. But for now, things are a little bit crazier than we necessarily expected, but that's the format. Guys, make sure you leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys smash the living, smash the living crap out of that subscribe button. I mean that. See you guys on this out more awesome content, I will see your beautiful faces back here later on the day with some more cool awesome content. You guys stay safe out there, all right? Peace out, guys. Patrons, thank you. Uh.
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.